Now, the first thing, though, uh, that we have to do is to get our perspectives with some background about the basic ideas which influence our everyday common sense, our fundamental notions about what life is about. Ideas of the world which are built into the very nature of the language we use and of our ideas of logic and of what makes sense altogether. And these basic ideas I call myth, not using the word myth to mean simply something untrue, but to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth is an image in terms of which we try to make sense of the world. We have this hostility to the external world because of the superstition, the myth, the absolutely unfounded theory that you yourself exist only inside your skin. Now, I want to propose another idea altogether. If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out in space and way out in time. Billions of years ago, you were a big bang. But now you're a complicated human being. But so we define ourselves as being only that. And when then we cut ourselves off and don't feel that we're still the Big Bang. But you are. Depends how you define yourself. You are the Big Bang, the original force of the universe coming on as whoever you are. See, when I meet you, I see not just what you define yourself as, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, I see every one of you as the primordial energy of the universe coming on at me in this particular way. I know I'm that too. But we've learned to define ourselves as separate from it. You and I are all as much continuous with the physical universe as a wave is continuous with the ocean. The ocean waves and the universe peoples. And as the wave, I wave at you and say, you. The world is waving at me with you and saying, uh, hi, I'm here. But the way we feel and sense our existence, being based on a myth that we are made, that we are parts, that we are things, our consciousness has been influenced so that each one of us does not feel that. We feel we have been hypnotized, literally hypnotized by social convention into feeling and sensing that we exist only inside our skins. That we are not the original bang, but just something out on the end of it. And therefore we are scared stiff. Because my wave is going to disappear. And I'm going to die. And that would be awful. You are a fluke. You are a separate event. And you run from the maternity ward to the crematorium and that's it, baby. Now, why does anybody think that way? There's no reason to, because it isn't even scientific. It's just a myth. If there is any such thing at all as intelligence and love and beauty, well, you found it in other people. In other words, it exists in us as human beings. And as I said, if it is there in us, it is symptomatic of the scheme of things. We are as symptomatic of the scheme of things as the apples are symptomatic of the apple tree or the rose of the rose bush. When, as a scientist, you describe the behavior of a living organism, you try to say what a person does. It's the only way in which you can describe what a person is. Describe what they do then you find out that in making this description, you cannot confine yourself to what happens inside the skin. So if that is necessary, if in other words, in order to describe my behavior, I have to describe your behavior and the behavior of the environment, it means that we've really got one system of behavior. 
that what I am involves what you are. I don't know who I am unless I know who you are. And you don't know who you are unless you know who I am. In other words, we are not separate. We and our environment and all of us and each other are interdependent systems. We know who we are in terms of other people. We all lock together. And any good scientist knows that what you call the external world is as much you as your own body. But the problem is, you see, we haven't been taught to feel that way. The myths underlying our culture and underlying our common sense have not taught us to feel identical with the universe, but only parts of it, only in it, only confronting it, aliens. And we are, I think, quite urgently in need of coming to feel that we are the eternal universe, each one of us. Otherwise, we're going to go out of our heads.